Well, you're not quite done. I mean, Henry will probably tell us tomorrow uh, a lot about the difficulties with it, that uh, there might not be a unique minimizer. Uh, right, exactly. Yes, so Laplace approximation and, you, and, and, and advanced things of Laplace approximations. Um, but yeah, so this is like the first step. You can go further. Um, actually, I will say a little bit about this. Anyway, but it's, it's, it's um, and the cost function can be thought of minus the log of the posterior distribution. Um, and, but you don't need this interpretation. Uh, uh, that's the nice thing about it. So you don't need to think theoretically, I mean, uh, probabilistically. And there's another technique that I don't think has been used uh, in, in data simulation. Um, uh, but in machine learning, it's very popular. Uh, again, it's lifting the whole thing up one level and, uh, and saying, well, we can also, I showed you this variational principle. And uh, so we have a minimization problem there as well, but now lift it up to the level of distributions again. So you abstract the whole thing up one level. You buy a lot of misery from that, but you also get some really benefits, some real benefits from it. And these are the following. Um, so uh, anyway, so this is called variation base, and it goes like this. So basically, we do this variation principle and restrict to a certain subclass of densities we can easily work with, and, and that's the Gaussian, or some other easily tractable distribution. So, but let's work with the Gaussians. So, so this is the cost functional. Here's your regularization term. That's the kullback leibler divergence between um, the measure you try to find and the one that's given. So this is your prior distribution that's given. This is uh, an element in this class of measures where the covariance matrix and the mean are still free parameters. You can freely choose them, but otherwise that's the class of distributions or yeah, uh, Gaussians you're going to work with. Um, and this is the, uh, the expected loss. And then you, this is now depending on, on this distribution, which itself depends on the covariance matrix and the, and the mean of this distribution. So you have a minimization problem in, in a finite number of parameters. The variance is covariances in the means. And you minimize. And you go to the calculus and you get the following thing. That the critical points of this functional are determined by these two equations. So here, you have inside the bracket, you have the logarithm of the posterior distribution uh, and the gradient of this. So this, of course, are exactly the critical points of this. But you don't take that as a critical point, but you take the one that averages these critical points over this class of distributions you've chosen. Right? In 4D war, you just take the minimum. Here now I say, I chose this distribution so that uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 ever, this expectation value is, is, is zero. So I shift my mean and my covariance matrix so that the expected value of this gradient is zero. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise I could make, otherwise if I would choose, then it would just give me the posterior. Right, so I, it's like finite elements. I mean, if you do discrete numerics, I mean, you, you have an infinite dimensional space to, to find the solution if you solve a PDE. And then in finite elements, we say, okay, we take a linear subspace, and in this linear subspace, we look for a solution, and we write down the minimization problem in that subspace. And here it's sort of similar. We restrict the class, an infinite dimensional class of all possible distributions, densities, to the Gaussians, or any other you, you um, care about. And, and here, you do the same, you take the second derivative and the expected value with respect to V. That's a Fisher information matrix. And you can compare this to Laplace approximation. Laplace does 4 d r in a way, so it uh, finds the, the minimum, the critical point of uh, that distribution, and then it takes the second derivative as a proxy. So, So the nice thing is, 
that this minimization problem is convex. So it, it has a shape like this. And there's a unique minimizer. If you do 4 DVAR, I mean, uh, then you can have multiple local minima, you might have multiple critical points, et cetera, et cetera, and you have to decide which one to take. Um, so it's not necessarily convex, but this variational principle is convex. So, so that's what you get. So you get, as I said, you buy yourself a bit of misery because you, you have to work now in the space of densities um, by this abstraction, but you gain convexity, and that's something anyone likes, right? Because then you know that your algorithm will converge. And there are clever ways of actually computing these things in a recursive way, uh, expectation maximization, the EM algorithm, <coughs> Uh, expectation propagation algorithm. I mean, they all sort of um, uh, come in come in this uh, in this place. But uh, let me just draw you. So, so basically, if you have a distribution like this, so then the critical point for the var. I mean, this variation principle would go down here, um, and then I'll make it a bit more extreme. So this here and this. So then it would fit a Gaussian with this curvature. Essentially, that would be. The Laplace approximation, if you just take one, uh, of course, uh, Henry will talk, talk, talk about more sophisticated approximations, but if you do the classic Laplace approximation, you basically approximate this distribution by this, this one here. Now, this will choose a, a wider, the minimum could also be something else, but it will generally choose uh, a, a, a Gaussian that sees these local minima in the vicinity, and, and realizes that there's a wider spread actually in the whole distribution. So it's, um, it's generally um, uh, a better fit. But it comes at a price. If you swap the order actually in this, uh, in this uh, kullback leibler thing, uh, then uh, the best approximation is the one that matches the first two moments of the distributions. And that's uh, yeah, uh, less popular in machine learning. So anyway, so this is something um, that is uh, widely used in machine learning. So, okay. Um, we're not going to quite make it through this. So uh, maybe we can actually uh, take a break now, and then I, I start with the random algorithms in like 20 minutes or so, right? Uh, it's just a few slides uh, with the basics, but I think that also will take a little time, so I, I don't want to interrupt in the middle of it, so I think we've done enough for now. Um, and uh, so if you have questions, then please ask them now. We've still got a little bit of time, uh, and otherwise we just get some fresh air. Hardcore math. Uh, I have I have a few things here. Uh, so Christian Robert has written two books, uh, which give a pretty broad introduction to uh, um, Bayesian statistics and numerical methods. Um, there's a paper by Andrew Stewart on inverse problems that sort of popularized this also this concept of using the slightly more abstract concepts, but. Um, um, so this is an, an acta in America. Uh, and this variational th things, the, a colleague of mine in Berlin, Manfred Opper, that's uh, one of the people that's developed it. So there's a paper on this uh, variational Gaussian approximations. Um, but, uh, but these books are definitely, uh, they don't talk so much about high dimensional stuff. So the, this high, high dimensional inference is a very active area of research uh, in, in, in mathematics and trying to understand um, uh, what we're doing and when we're approximating in high dimensional spaces. But uh, uh, anyway, so the starting point definitely is this, and this is my own book. But again, there, uh, I actually, <laughs> I think I talk in the Radon nicotin derivative in my book. I might have mentioned it somewhere, but I've widely, I mean, basically avoided it. I have a bit of discussion on high dimensional problems, but um, yeah. Right. Okay. And um, let's take a break. <laughs>